I looked online, I saw that spreadsheets are being sold and that was kind of the green light for me to go ahead and say, hey, uh, you can do this and other people are selling these. So I looked at what they were selling them for and, they're, and the, the prices were mainly you know, between $4.95 and $9.95 a pop. So my deal was, I said, well, I'll price it at $9.95 and um, I worked for a while to learn kind of how to launch a web page and you know, buy a domain and all that. Once that was, that was done and the website was all built, um, I remember Julie chose the name of the business. I was sitting there at our card table slash kitchen table and I was saying, oh, I'm going to buy a domain for this website. What should it be? And uh, Julie's like, well, uh, she's laying on the couch. I remember her saying, well, I think, uh, well, people need a budget, so maybe you need a budget. And I said, okay, well, yeah, let's do that. So you need a budget. So that was how we named it, no deliberations and didn't worry too much about anything. Uh, we just named it that. Uh, we called it YNAB for short, right away. And then only later did I figure out people would say, they would say YNAB, they would say YNAB and all sorts of different ways of saying it. It's YNAB, but I don't really care that much. Um, got the site set up and everything was ready to go. And I was able to set it up and have payments go through PayPal and I was selling it for $9.95. So the site goes live and I'm kind of just sitting there ready to go. My first thought was to make money by getting visitors to the site, having them buy the software or buy the spreadsheet. So I, um, I basically did what anyone would do that has no idea what they're doing. I went to Walmart and I bought some of those letter, those vinyl letterings and I put youneedabudget.com on the back of our extremely old, clunky uh, Chevy Prism, which is an underrated car, by the way, discontinued. But um, so yeah, and then I put the website, you know, you need a budget.com, and then I think I said, yes, you do. Really, you know, catchy, witty stuff. And that was my first uh, method of advertising was to have people see the website and then visit it. My other one was to print up some flyers, so I printed a bunch of flyers uh, and then we lived in an apartment complex with probably, I, I don't know how many, 400, 500 apartments and uh, it was kind of sprawled over this whole big area and I remember Porter was born at this point and uh, I remember Julie was with him in the stroller and I would just, we would just walk along and I would just run up, put a flyer on each door, you know, go up all the stairs, put a flyer on. I did that for like four hours. Julie called it quits after about two hours because Porter was getting upset. He probably could sense that was a totally fruitless effort. But then I remember going back home and checking Stat Counter, my stats program at the time, and watching, just seeing if anyone bought. And I would see the IP address and I would know they were from Provo, where we were, uh, Provo, Utah. So I could see, well, I had gotten about, I think, three visitors from those four hours of work. I toyed with the idea of going door to door and just thinking, well, if I could just, you know, show people this software or this spreadsheet that they would buy it. But my dad actually told me that probably wouldn't be a good idea. Um, no one was buying. It was about two weeks into it. And I actually got uh, started on Google's AdWords and started listing, just writing ads and listing them. And I was getting traffic. I was paying for about a uh, hundred visitors uh, a day and no one was buying. And I was spending money. Luckily, at that time, AdWords was much less expensive than it is now. Competition was, was far less, so it was very cheap to do this experiment. But no one was buying still. And then I remember I talked with my friend again, the one that told me originally I could sell it. And I said, I'm selling it for $9.95. And he said, oh, that's too, too cheap. No one's going to even bother at $9.95. You should double your price. So I went home. I doubled the price. And that day, I got my first sale. So. When in doubt, charge more and uh, good things will happen. Um, at once that started, uh, sales were still really, really, really small. The first, uh, first sale that I made was to a lady. Uh, I still remember her email address. It started with Scooby. It was a Yahoo address. And um, she emailed me. I, I, I was so nervous when I got the first sale. I saw it come through my email box. I was just, I was so nervous thinking, okay, somebody finally has this spreadsheet and they're kicking the tires and what's going to happen? She emailed me uh, the next day and said it didn't work on her Mac. So I went to the uh, computer lab, jumped on a Mac, tried to get it to work. I couldn't get it to work. 
and so I refunded her money, the money. Now I could get it to work. I know enough about spreadsheets now, but at the time I didn't know enough about spreadsheets to be able to troubleshoot that. So I refunded my first sale ever. Uh, but sales started kind of slowly getting in and coming in, but really still slow. My sales copy was atrocious. I was basically an explanation of each sheet in the program. By the time I launched it, I had so many, so many different sheets in this whole spreadsheet. There was just a lot to digest. Um, didn't have the rules at all. I just talked to people about the spreadsheet. You record it here, it goes here, you do this, it goes. I didn't really talk about like benefits to them at all, and that was a big, that's a big mistake, you know, with, with marketing. So anyway, um, basically what happened was the next, I launched in September of 2004. The next February, I sat down and I rewrote the copy. And I made it all one page, fairly long, kind of infomercially. But in the rewrite is where I discovered I had these four rules. And that was where I finally started to get it to take a little bit with people because they realized, oh, there's a method to this spreadsheet. There's a purpose and there's kind of some governing principles. And that's what helped, is just having those principles. So sales started to happen. February of 2005, I remember my profits were $48 and uh, it still was not enough to cover my rent, but I was experimenting with things, trying, trying out different approaches and kind of spending money to, to see what would work. And then it started working, and I think Taylor, um, our programmer now, I think he contacted me uh, shortly after that and basically said, I've got this, you know, would you like some help? Maybe we could do direct importing from banks into this spreadsheet. And I told him, well, if we're going to do that, I really want to build this, uh, just a separate app. And so Taylor came to me and said, well, well, I mean, he didn't come to me. He was, came to me via email and said, well, hey, I can program this. Uh, we'll do it in C Sharp. We can develop it pretty quickly. And so from February of 05 to November of 05, we worked on YNAB Pro. And I called it Pro because I was still going to leave YNAB, the original spreadsheet there. And uh, it was, had better functionality, it ran on Windows, it was just cleaner, more professional. Uh, and so when we launched that and let people upgrade, we were able to get more traction. People took us a little more seriously and they said, okay, this is legitimate, it's not just a spreadsheet, they've also got this other offering. I started trying to recruit affiliates and things and yeah, it worked out. Taylor was still working as a, at a video game company um, full time and just was really doing this part time. Uh, we had never met, and then um, in April of '06, I graduated and uh, took a job down in Dallas with an accounting firm, and uh, got my CPA that summer. But then went down to Dallas. When I was in Dallas, and 